Hey, what's going on everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. So a handful of different comments from viewers and subscribers talking about sockets, different brands, different continents that they were uh, manufactured in, best quality, mid quality, high end, uh, low end, expense, like cost wise, which one's the best for what reasons. And I figured we'd go ahead and just kind of dive into it a little bit today. If you remember a long while back, I did do a video of what a waste of a thousand dollars in snap on sockets. Yeah, at that time, I did pick up the quarter inch and the three eighths drive deep and shallow sockets. And uh, when I got home, it was to my realization that it was just a waste of money. I could have seen spending that thousand dollars in so many different other directions as far as like tool purchasing was concerned i really didn't see any extra added benefit even with this whole flank drive plus and how much tighter it fit fasteners etc etc throughout the years of wrenching even being over between a dealership and an independent shop i could tell you that no matter what the fastener was regardless if it was a, a a Matco or a Snap-on branded ratchet, uh, open end wrench, socket, you name it, the fitment was always just a slightly different. What should have been a 14 was a little bit sloppy and turned into me using a 916. And I could argue with the fact that everyone would say, well, when would you need SAE? We don't even work on that kind of old fastener style anymore. It's all pretty much metric now. Let's agree to disagree because, again, fasteners produced by the vehicle manufacturer may not be as precise as you would believe. The same thing can be said about a higher end socket compared to a lower end socket and the overall fitment based on tolerances. So who really is to decide whether or not SAE or metric is needed and which socket is the best mid-range or worst and we're going to talk about it so today i've put a layout of different sockets here one old school kicking it back to 2010 impact socket one of the very few that i have left from an impact socket set that i ran for many years i actually had this craftsman made in usa set it was pretty much a full set and at some point when i decided i wanted to try out other brands pittsburgh uh nico and even uh, down to the Techie Tong that we got from, AKA Chris from Client Graphics, we changed them out. I ended up getting rid of these and we ended up going a different direction. So for the last, uh, I'd say four or five years now, I think I've been running these Tekton sockets that Chris from Client Graphics uh, sent us via the mail, wanted to know how well they've held up. I could tell you they've held up very well. I haven't had it split. I haven't had it bevel on the inside they've held up very well. I could say the same exact thing about the Pittsburgh Impact socket. This is a Pittsburgh Impact Swivel Universal half inch drive socket. You could see that I've definitely put some use behind this as this is an 18 millimeter and it has definitely come in handy under the gun and even under a ratchet. <clears throat> so for that, the Pittsburgh one has held up very well. This is an old school made in the USA metric 12 point in Chrome. I got this in a half inch set. I still have that set. I still run that set for when I run into some oddball sizes or in between stuff. Though you might not always run into a 25 millimeter on a car. You might run into it at some kind of at home fastener project, whether you're putting together nuts and bolts for some kind of awning, furniture, other random stuff that you might find that this might actually come in handy even if you're working on dirt bikes and stuff like that so for that look it's held up i haven't had any issues i've got pretty much almost a full oversized set of these i did run into a situation where i didn't have an 18 millimeter 12 point shallow and a half inch drive for doing the bulletproof kits on the six liter fords so i got this husky this one individual husky from home depot during lunch and i've used this on at least a dozen different six liter cylinder head bulletproof jobs it's held up, no cracking, no beveling of the inside. It's held up over time. Icon, universal 3 8 drive. Okay, this thing has come in handy. I've used it under the gun and on a ratchet. It's held up. 
I haven't had any issues with the inside ball breaking or anything like that. So for that, I would say that one's also good to go. Gear wrench, quarter inch, swivelly socket. This thing's come in handy. I've used this set a lot, especially in the 10 millimeter and eight millimeter when you're trying to get into a weird spot. Okay, I've used it under the gun. No big deal. The, the ball has not locked up on me or anything like that. So for that, I would make it green for go. The snap-on 12 millimeter, 12 point Ford socket. So I did go this direction with it. I did try to go a different direction. I did purchase one from Jeff. And after three times of having to warranty it out after using it under the gun, I was fed up with it and decided to go the snap-on route. This thing has not failed me. So ergo, the higher end quality for this specific style worked out better than whatever the other brand was that I was trying to use that Jeff had sold to me at the time. I cannot remember who the manufacturer was, so I'm not gonna sit here and try to guess at it, but I will tell you it was a made in Taiwan manufacturer of some kind, as he described to me, just didn't hold up. So yes, I went this route. I think this cost me 30 or 40 bucks. The gear wrench, mid-length, quarter inch sockets, chrome. I've used this under the gun and under a ratchet, and I've used these for many years. I'd say at least the last six years, probably. And I haven't had any of these split on me, uh, bevel out or wear out on the inside. And overall, they have been a great mid-length socket. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. Matco Impact, I've had this thing for about 10 years. And I ended up with this actually on a promo. At the time, the Matco dealer was doing a promo on a half inch breaker bar, and he gave it to me with the half inch impact extension and a 19 and 21 millimeter flip socket. Since this is the most common size of socket outside of seven eighths or 22 millimeter and 17 millimeter, you're gonna find 19 and 21 for the most part um, when you're removing wheels and tires, right? Okay, so that being said, the socket did hold up on me. The extension, however, did not under the gun. Oftentimes the gun would slide out, bang, 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 and it rounded out and beveled out the inside of the Matco extension. I did switch it over to my gear wrench chrome, which I have been using under the gun, and some people will say you're not supposed to, but I do, and you know what? This gear wrench extension has held up a heck of a lot longer than the Matco one did, and that could be because it's made out of a softer metal. You could argue whatever you want, I will tell you that sometimes the harder metal Pittsburgh half inch extensions also held up longer than the Matco one did. So, okay, kind of getting into some of this now. 17 millimeter sleeved, the nylon sleeved Cornwell. So I did run into a lot of different 17 millimeters, I believe like on the Dart for the studs, uh, European vehicles like Audi, Volkswagen, okay. And this sleeve has actually stayed on there the best. So I was using the Pittsburgh set. You saw the sleeves that were on those. Those sleeves have a tendency of coming off. I'm not sure what they did differently to this, but I will tell you that this sleeve has stayed on this particular socket the longest. The inside is held out, hasn't beveled, haven't had any issues. Occasionally I've had to hammer it on to the stud because the stud was a little bit chewed up or what have you. It's held up over time. Why did I go the Cornwall route? I needed it at the time. He was there. I think I might've paid like 30 bucks for this thing. So one last socket here. This is a Matco. I don't know what kind of socket these are. I gotta call them extractor style or splined extractor. These things are legit, okay? Now, I did just grab one random 11 millimeter, but if you see the teeth on the inside of that, they kind of have this spline kind of deal. Okay, so for rounded quarter inch fasteners, tap this sucker on, it will get it off, okay? There's a lot of times you don't really have a lot of room to put an actual extractor on there. It doesn't have quite the firm bite, but I guarantee if you take this and maybe something a little bit heavy like that, give it a little tap or your ratchet or something like that and get it on there, it'll extract it just fine. So what are my overall thoughts and opinions about all these different sockets? Okay, look, I don't care. I really don't at the end of the day. Uh, it depends on which one works out best for me, what the cost was, when I got it, etc. If I wouldn't have stepped into the Nico and the Techie Ton to try out different things for you guys on this channel, I would have ran that USA made in, uh, or I'm sorry, I would have ran the Craftsman made in USA sockets that I picked up in 2010 and still would be running them today. I haven't had to change them out at all for anything else because they've just been a phenomenal socket. 
Um, but using the Tecton ones, I also can say the same exact thing. So one made in USA, one, one made wherever else, right? I don't, I don't know if that was made in Taiwan or USA. I don't know where Tecton makes their half inch, but I will tell you they have held up. A lot of these sockets have held up to include the Pittsburgh ones. So I might give Pittsburgh a lot of stuff because sometimes I, I question the integrity of the Chrome, but I believe when you're just starting off, look, I just got done running a couple of weeks out of the Chrome and I've used their Chromes in the past. And when they split, I moved on to a different brand. Okay. But for the most part, if you're using them with a hand ratchet, they shouldn't really split. They should last you a long time. I know some guys that still have that multicolored 3 8 drive socket set in the deeps, and they've been using them for years and have never changed them out. So a socket is pretty much just a socket at the end of the day until it's not, okay? And what I mean by that is when I ran into a situation where I needed to put this under the impact quite a bit because we were dropping lots of Ford fuel tanks to do fuel pumps and stuff on, I needed to get that drive shaft out of the way. I needed something I could put under the gun multiple times that wouldn't fail me so that way I could do multiple jobs and this snap-on one was the way to go. Would I have gone through and bought all my sockets snap-on? No, that is ridiculous. It is a waste of money. I would rather have all their whole entire cordless lineup over buying a bunch of mechanic sockets and stuff from them. Really, that's what it comes down to. As far as gear wrench goes, gear wrench has been a pretty good brand. And for the most part, they've been pretty affordable and everyone considers them a mid range. But as far as sockets go, look, I don't know. I was pretty satisfied with that made in China craftsman set that we gave to Dorito and the Lucha Cabre. Okay. That set was actually a pretty satisfying set. And I want to pay, I want to say I paid a fraction of the cost. If I was to go buy the Quinn entire 400 some odd piece socket set, I could tell you that I'd be pretty satisfied with that socket set. And I don't think that I'd be changing them out anytime soon. Unless of, course they, unless of course they had split on me, in which case I would go ahead and either warranty it out or I'd go ahead and move up to another one if I could afford to. Why does somebody buy something inexpensive before going to a mid-range, before going to something more expensive? Depends on what you can afford. If I'm just starting out or I've got no money to be able to afford, I don't know, a $100 torque wrench, I'll go ahead and take that Pittsburgh torque wrench for 20 bucks, run it, and use it until eventually I decide, okay, you know, I've ran it long enough. I'd like a different style. I don't like tightening the little knob down at the bottom to lock it in. I'd rather just pull and, and move the ratchet up or push a digital button and be there already. Okay, but I might not have a hundred bucks. So I might start off with that $13 or $20 torque wrench until I decide to go ahead and change it. And that would just be changing something that I, you know, that kind of annoys me or something like that, right? But when it comes down to it, it's really what you can afford. And I believe that all these sockets are great and all of them have held up. And I don't believe that you're going to really have to change any of the cheaper ones out for the expensive ones. It just really depends on what it is that you're going for. Like I said, this Snap-on 12 millimeter Universal, I'd recommend that to anybody that's removing four drive shafts. As far as all these other sockets that I've mentioned, look, if you could find an Icon mid-length quarter inch and it fits your budget better than the gear wrench ones, run it. If you found that gear wrench is more affordable than the Icon ones, I'd suggest going that route. Uh, if you like Capri tools and they have a nice mid-range set, I'd say go that route. Uh, if Craftsman, even though it says ma uh, made in, even though you know it's made in China or whatever, if they have what you need and that's what's close to you and it's within your price range, run it. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, a socket pretty much just is a socket until it's not. This is the only example I could really give you of one that's just constantly failed me until I moved up to the higher end one. Other than that, the rest of these could all be Pittsburgh for all I care, and I would probably get years and years and years of use out of them and probably have very few issues. So at the end of the day, do what's right for you and your budget. Get what it is that you want and what you like. Maybe you like the style of laser etching on the Craftsman over the style of laser etching on the Husky. Maybe it comes down to affordability and cost. If I was gonna recommend any kind of socket sets to anybody, I would say get you a good 3 8 and quarter inch drive in chrome. Cheap of the cheap, whatever you wanna do, but get it in chrome. As far as your impact stuff goes, I would say get all your uh, half inch sockets in the impact. Because more times than not, when you get to half inch, you're gonna be putting it under the gun and you're gonna be impacting some stuff off. You're probably very rarely going to use these for an adjustment unless you're doing an alignment, in which case, guess what? An impact socket on a ratchet works no differently 
than one on the chrome. The only biggest difference is when you go to put the, uh, the end of the socket over your half inch cordless or your half inch pneumatic tool, the O-ring clip goes in and out of the impact socket easier than the chrome because they were made differently. These were made for the impact, putting it under the gun. These were not, but you still can, but it'll wear out that O-ring and C-clip faster than you could say Bob's your uncle, okay? That's why I don't recommend putting the impacts on here, but if you got to, you got to, go ahead and run it. Some people tell me, no, no, dude, it's gonna split and you'll get shrapnel in your face. I've never seen it. Not saying it hasn't happened. I've just never seen it. It's never happened to me. I haven't even split. I've split more sockets under a wrench or a ratchet than I have under the gun. That's all I got for this video, guys. Thanks as always for watching my channel. I hope you enjoyed today's content. Cheers to those of you that have your beers, or in this case, water, because it's the afternoon and it is hot, and I am taking a little bit of a rest before I do some cardio and some weight training. That's all I got for now. See you guys next time. Cheers and deuces.